So hello everyone. Let's start our third and last session of the day. I hope you have been joined so far. So the second part and the final will showcase uh, innovative startups in UK. And we are going to have Dr. John Maher, Chief Scientific Officer at Low Seed Bio, and Dr. Emily Warner, Senior Scientist at Icarovec. Each speaker will have 10 minutes to present, and the questions will be taken afterwards in a panel discussion. And for last but not least, we are delighted to have our keynote, keynote speaker, Professor Moin Selem. He's a professor at the University of Bristol and founder of Bruce Spring Therapeutics. And uh, we'll finalize the day, as I said, with uh, the last, last panel discussion with all the, the company's representatives. Just please write down your questions for the end, and they will be answered uh, at the end. So, our next speaker is Dr. John Maher. He is a clinical immunologist who leads the Car Mechanics Research Group within King's College London. He played a key role in the early development of second generation CD28 car technology while a visiting fellow at Memorial Sloan Catherine Center, Cancer Center an approach that has achieved clinical impact in hematological malignancies. His research group is focused on the development of adaptive immunotherapy using CAR-engineered and gamma-delta T cells with a primary emphasis on solid tumor types. He's also the scientific founder and chief scientific officer of a spin-out company named Leucid Bio. In addition, he's a consultant immunologist within King's Health Partners and Eastbourne Hospital. Now let's welcome Dr. John with the presentation titled Parallel CAR T Cell Immunotherapy of Solid Tumors. So please. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much uh, for the introduction and uh, thanks for the invitation to come and speak. Uh, I can't remember the last time I did a 10 minute talk, so this is going to be interesting, but I promise to try to keep on, on time. And these are some uh, disclosures. So I had hoped to tell you a little bit about a clinical trial that we're running, but I, I, I've removed that from the presentation in the interests of time. So instead, what I'm going to talk to you about is the kind of core technology that we developed some years ago, which led us to spin out this company called Lucid Bio from, uh, from King's College London. So I imagine that everybody here in the room is familiar with the different generations of chimeric antigen receptors which have been described. You know, going right back to 1987, the first description of a car by a group in Japan, Kuana et al., rather, um, you know, a paper that's not commonly cited, actually. But the difficulty with these first-generation cars, where you have only an activating domain uh, on the inside of the receptor, is that when they were tested in the clinic, they simply weren't enabled. What's caused all the hoopla around CAR-T is this beast here, the second generation CAR, where you introduce a single co-stimulatory module upstream of that activating moiety. And this is the technology which has made the leap in the context of blood cancers. Somewhat surprisingly, however, when we've moved from second to third generation cars, where you introduce a second co-stimulatory module into this structure, we haven't seen any further real improvement in clinical impact. And this is surprising, really, because in this architecture, you can introduce two very different types of co-stimulatory molecules, such as CD28 and 41BB, for example. And these individually are both very effective in the second gen platform, and we know that these different flavors of co-stimulation can synergize in naturally occurring immune responses. So that led us to speculate that maybe there's a problem with this kind of linear fusion design. Perhaps these co-stimulatory moieties need to be situated in their natural location in proximity to the plasma membrane in order for them to work. We've known that that's the case for CD28 for more than 20 years, so why shouldn't it be the case for molecules such as 41BB? So because of that, we designed this lateral structure, which we refer to as a parallel car, where, for example, we co-express a second-gen car with CD28 here alongside a chimeric co-stimulatory receptor, which is a different co-stimulatory unit, such as 41BB. 
So um, with that in mind, we have developed at Lucid quite a lot of different P cars. But um, in the interest of time, I'll just tell you about one family of P cars uh, which we have developed and which is targeted against this, uh, this group of ligands, the so-called NKG2D ligands. Once again, many of you in the room will be familiar with NKG2D. It's a receptor expressed by natural killer cells and some T cells, and it patrols for these eight different NKG2D ligands because these ligands are a marker of cell stress. So this is an innate immune surveillance mechanism looking for cells which are potentially dangerous to us. And we thought this could be an interesting set of targets for tumor immunotherapy. And we're not unique in that respect because uh, there is a company, for example, called Celiad Oncology, who have quite an advanced uh, NKG2D CAR-T program in the clinic in multiple clinical trials uh, at the moment. Now, uh, this uh, movie here uh, is an example of what happens when you test these NKG2D PCAR T cells in an in vitro tu tumor model. Uh, and I should point out that what we've done here is to mix tumor cells along alongside mesenchymal stromal cells to kind of simulate in a very simplistic way the microenvironment that's found in a tumor. Many solid tumors, such as pancreatic cancer, for example, have a dense stromal infiltrate. And these stromal cells actually provide the bulk of the structure of the tumor. And one of the things that they do is they produce chemokines, which naturally attract T cells into the so-called stromal highway, as it were. And when T cells are sitting in the stroma, I guess what they are not doing is attacking the tumor. So it's a kind of a defense mechanism that, uh, that tumors can often use. The difficulty, however, from the point of view of NKG2D ligands is that stromal cells are also stressed within the tumor. And consequently, if you could maybe just start the movie for me, please, if you add on these T cells, you'll see that the first place that they go to is the stroma. They start attacking the stroma. The tumor cell islands begin to coalesce, almost as though they're trying to escape from the T cells. But as you can see, then the T cells turn their attention to the tumor cells and destroy them uh, as well. And you can also carry out these kinds of uh, models, if you could run this movie, please, in a three-dimensional spheroidal structure. So what we have here is a ball of uh, cells where the tumor cells are labeled with GFP, the stromal cells are labeled with RFP. It takes a few hours for the, the T cells, the CAR T cells, to break their way into this core of cells. But as you can see by now in the movie, it's becoming progressively more and more homogeneous as the T cells infiltrate and destroy both the tumor and the stromal cells that are present. Now you can even see this actually with the naked eye because what you see here are five tumor spheroids which have been co-cultivated with untransduced T cells, and you can retrieve them more or less intact. And if you de-aggregate these spheroids and put them through a flow cytometer, you can see that there are lots of tumor and stromal cells present here. There are some T cells as well, but notice how small the T cells are because, of course, they have not been activated in this culture. With a linear car, again, these spheroids are visible with the naked eye, although if you de-aggregate, you can see that the proportion of tumor has been somewhat reduced, and these T cells are more activated, indicated by the larger scatter that they, they uh, achieve in flow, uh, flow cytometer. Whereas with the P car, nothing is visible with the naked eye, and if you de-aggregate what you can't see, as it were, you can see that the tumor in stroma is completely destroyed, and you've got highly activated uh, T cells present. And then if you move that in vivo, here you can see two examples of xenograft models in which we have treated NSG mice with an established tumor burden with our NKG2D PCAR T cells. Now the control in each case is this mysteriously labeled 2G CAR, and in actual fact what this is is a PAN or B CAR. It's the CAR that we have in the clinic at the moment. If we take those 2G CAR T cells and expose them to these pancreatic tumor cells in vitro, they will recognize them and destroy them. But in vivo, they have no therapeutic activity, whereas by contrast, the PCAR T cells cause complete eradication of the tumor, and a re-challenge with that tumor is rejected as far out as day 88. It's a very similar story here with this mesothelioma xenograft, with the exception of the fact that the 2G car does have a degree of anti-tumor activity in this model. And here's a third example. This is a mesothelioma PDX, which we have established from a patient at Guy's Hospital. And you can see that this tumor was growing for over 100 days in the mice before we treat intravenously with these PCAR T cells, causing regression of those tumors in contrast to all of the controls, which have no therapeutic activity uh, in this model.
So I think this is my conclusion slide. It's like buying a house when you design cars. It's all about the location of these units in the fusion receptor. And I'll finish by thanking, oh, wrong button, by thanking the many people who have carried out this work, both in my academic group, uh, known as the Car Mechanics Group. I didn't invent that name, by the way. Uh, and also our company, uh, Lucid Bio. And I look forward to questions at the end of the session.